Hello and welcome to another Wednesday whiteboard training with Cheeky Scientist. I'm Isaiah Henkel and today I want to talk to you about what you can do with your PhD in industry. Um, in previous weeks we've talked a lot about how the landscape has changed for PhD careers in that there are very few careers uh, for PhDs in academia anymore, uh, certainly very few careers that will pay you what you're worth. But in industry, there is a variety of careers. And this is why we always want to remind you to remember your value as a PhD, because your PhD may not be valuable in academia, but it's very valuable in industry. And today, you're living in a great time because you can do more careers, you, you have more career paths available to you that will leverage your PhD in industry than you ever have before. The problem is, is that the academic, uh, most of the lifetime academics or most universities, they don't train you on what these careers are. And many of them don't know what careers are out there for you. Um, here at Cheeky Scientist, we have them cataloged and we wanna help you figure out what career is right for you. So I wanna go through this in a, in a very um, general way, but by talking about some of the major categories in terms of careers that you can get into. Now, if you're interested in learning more and you wanna dig a bit deeper after this video, you can just uh, type the, uh, the word map into the comments here. So map, M-A-P, just type in map into the, uh, the comments on this post and I'll send you a career map guide. So we have a PhD career map guide that will go through everything that I'm talking about today and will go into more detail and, and we'll, we'll really elaborate on these careers that are available. Um, but here I've just uh, I've defined them in terms of five different categories. Information, aggregation, and patents, that's the first category. Sales, and marketing, that's the second category. Research and development, the third category. Clinical and medical affairs, that's the fourth category. And then finally, business, finance, and policy. Okay, I'm gonna go through each one of these categories. Um, they're a little bit different than maybe what you're used to. And each category has a variety of jobs, job titles that are available to you and that will leverage your PhD. Um, so first, info aggregation, aggregation of patents. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about intellectual property, right? Becoming a patent agent, a patent examiner. Of course, you can go on and, and get your JD and, and become a lawyer of uh, IP as well. Um, but also writing and editing. Uh, the field of medical writing is very big right now for PhDs and it pays well. Uh, scientific editing, scientific writing. Uh, and then finally, uh, data scientist positions. No matter what your background is, you can get into a data scientist position. You don't, know, you don't have to know how to program. Very hot field. I think there's about 112% growth in the data scientist industry this year alone. Um, and then data analyst, which is very, very similar, except for you look at the data and you decide how to uh, leverage it for the betterment of the company. So, so some great positions here. What do they have in common? Do you like to collate information together, the data, um, and, and, and focus on, on the aggregation, uh, especially in terms of things like patents, uh, uh, writing, and uh, uh, data scientist fields overall? Number two, sales and marketing. Now, a lot of PhDs, they kind of just think, no, not for me. Why would I want to get into sales and marketing? Uh, but today, companies hire PhDs into sales roles that aren't really sales roles. They're more of a, a technical specialist role. Because who better to talk to a PhD or an MD about a scientific uh, product or program or a clinical treatment? than a PhD. So PhDs are hired into these roles and they're paid very well. In fact, if your number one goal is to get into a job that leverages your PhD and pays you the most, this is the field that you would want to get into. And it includes application scientist positions. This is where you're helping a company's clients apply an instrument or a reagent or a technology or a treatment uh, to their work or to their research or to what that uh, other company or university does. Okay, hence the name application scientist. Sometimes they're called field application scientist. The job titles may vary, but that application part is key. Technical sales specialist, technical support specialist. This means that you are going to work closely with researchers, whether in a lab environment or at a different company. Um, you are going to be responsible for supporting them. You'll, you'll work closely with uh, possibly account managers that are on a different sales team. But basically, these are, these are for people who are great communicators. You can speak nerd and normal person. That's a good way to think about it. And then Marcom. Marcom's a good example too, marketing communications. So if you like to look at data and then turn it into something that communicates why a product or why a company or a brand um, is, is, a, is strong in a certain area, uh, marketing communications or marketing in general might be for you. Number three, research and development. 
I'm guessing for most of you here, I don't need to explain what that is, but if you like to innovate, if you want to help take a product to, uh, to the market or from conception all the way to a market, this might be a position for you. Um, it can be traditional research scientist positions, project management positions. So as a research scientist, you might focus more, you might be working more in a lab and you might work on a variety of initiatives, a variety of products. Um, the difference between a research scientist and a project manager is, is that with a project manager, you'll usually manage one project or one product all the way from conception all the way to the market and supporting it in the market. Um, so there's a, there's a bit of a difference there. And then QC, of course, to QC research scientist, you might focus on quality control at a company as well. Number four, clinical and medical affairs. This overall is a very hot field right now. A lot of PhDs are being hired into regulatory affairs and medical affairs in particular. So if you're interested in the, uh, the regulatory side of science, this might be a good fit for you. Um, the medical science liaison field is very hot right now. It's actually, I think, the fourth top uh, paying field overall. Um, it requires liaising, right? You could be in the liaison. Again, being able to speak nerd and normal person, being able to present these skills matter. Um, also, clinical trials project managers, uh, clinical research associates. So if you want to work on the clinical side of things, this field might be right for you. Finally, business finance and policy. So this is for people who want to maybe get away from the bench and maybe want to get more into the, the financial, the policy side um, of, of a particular business or of an institution. Some of these roles include business development, right? That's a, that's a very popular field right now for PhDs. We see a lot of PhDs being hired into business development. And these are PhDs without former industry training. Um, PhDs are very good at seeing far ahead, of, you know, looking at all the data that an analyst might be collecting or that a data scientist might be collecting, and then making strategic business decisions. Right along with that is a business, business analyst positions, uh, as well as um, quantitative analysis uh, uh, analyst positions. So again, you're looking at lots of data and you're deciding how the, the business can best use this data to move forward. Um, finally, you will have uh, scientific policy advisors, scientific ethics advisors, and then financial services advisors too. So a lot thrown into that last category. This is a really good way to think about what's available to you. In short, there is a lot. There's a lot of jobs out there that will leverage your PhD, allow you to do meaningful work, and pay you well for it. Again, if you want to dig into these jobs more, just type in the word MAP into the comments on this post and we'll send you our PhD career position map. It's brand new, it's absolutely free. Um, if you type map into the comments here, I'll send it to you. Um, and until next time, remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.